On November 3, 1997, cosmonaut Pavel Vinogradov was working outside the International Space Station when he suddenly took a large spherical object and tossed it into space. It was a satellite. Satellites are a vital tool in our quest to discover more about the universe. In fact, most of the recent developments in space exploration directly result from some kind of robotic contraption in Earth's orbit. However, launching these machines is a highly complex and demanding ordeal, and it's also not cheap. It's been estimated that launching a primary satellite would cost a private party up to $400 million. If you then add the cost of building the device, the price tag can ascend up to $800 million for highly specialized satellites. Knowing the costs and complexities of launching these artifacts, the world of space exploration was astounded when footage surfaced of Russian cosmonauts launching a satellite into orbit using nothing but their hands. The feat, which would ordinarily require precise computer calculations to place the satellite in the exact trajectory needed to reach its orbit, attested to the outstanding agility and knowledge astronauts hold. The first time that hand-tossed satellites were employed, a great uncertainty surrounded the whole affair. The risk of the satellite never reaching orbit and losing the hardware in space was very real. But if the experiment worked, it would revolutionize space science. Putting satellites into orbit in such a cheaper and easier way could allow smaller countries with limited resources to launch their own small-sized satellites. But as Russia would soon attest after a severe worldwide controversy, they would need to be careful in how to use and profit for them. A student project. Developed by a group of international students, the miniature satellite tossed by Pavel Vinogradov was called Sputnik 40 in commemoration of the 40th Sputnik 1 anniversary. Still, it was soon nicknamed Sputnik Jr. by its creators. The project was an ambitious experiment, designed to be precisely a one-third scale model of Sputnik 1. While Sputnik 1 was comparatively bulky at 23 inches in diameter and weighed over 184 pounds, Sputnik Jr. was 8 inches wide and had a mass of 8.8 .8 pounds. Due to its experimental nature and the little room it held inside, the device was not intended to conduct complex operations once in space, like its much larger predecessor. Instead, it was simply fitted with a radio transmitter that would cast a signal as it traveled in orbit around the globe. Its beacon was set to transmit on 145.820 MHz, unlike Sputnik 1's beacon at 20 MHz and 40 MHz. Cosmonaut Pavel Vinogradov delayed his throw until the space station had correctly oriented to clearly view the satellite's projected flight route. As he launched the spherical satellite back on Earth, a group of anxious students and professors waited, glued to their ham radios, hoping that as the little sphere passed above them, they would be able to detect its signal. The tiny satellite glided away, instantly becoming satellite number 24,958 in NASA's catalog, and the first satellite in history to be hand-tossed into orbit. The Sputnik Jr. reached orbit successfully, and as it floated over France, a group of students inside the Raydelay College in Réunion, where the transmitter was assembled, exploded in cheers as they listened for the first time to the unique beep sound of their creation. A few moments later, the excitement also invaded the Polytechnic Laboratory of Nalchik in Russia, as another group of students who had worked passionately on the project waited for the signal. The excitement was hard to contain for the young students who had made history. Soon, ham radios all across the world could tune in to the Sputnik 40's unique signal. A talented group of international students had built two working models of their ambitious satellite, and the two of them had been shipped to the International Space Station in September of the same year. However, only one was chosen to be launched. Small and Powerful The 40-year advantage that Sputnik Jr. had over its predecessor paid off as the three one-pound packs of four lithium batteries were able to outperform the three silver-zinc batteries fitted in the original, much larger model. Sputnik Jr. operated longer than the original Sputnik 1 40 years earlier. Sputnik 1's battery only lasted 21 days, but Sputnik Jr., thanks to the more advanced lithium technology, continued to transmit for 56 days. After Sputnik Jr.'s battery died, it continued to orbit the Earth for four months before finally dropping down into the atmosphere. When it was in orbit, the small satellite was able to assist in numerous experiments and calculations, as the radio signal it transmitted was helpful in triangulating the position of diverse objects in Earth's orbit. Even though it was a student project and its functions were somewhat limited, the small sphere accomplished its objective 
of proving hand-tossed satellites were feasible and reliable. Hence, the project opened the doors for the development and eventual launching of similar devices. In 1998 and 1999, Russian cosmonauts launched two more satellites by hand, Sputnik 41 and Sputnik 99. The idea was to continue the development of this new approach to satellite launching, as it was a relatively cheap and effective way to send satellites into orbit. Sputnik 41 was carried to Mir, the former Soviet and later Russian space station, aboard the Progress M-40 spacecraft on October 25, 1998. Two weeks later, astronauts Gennady Padalka and Sergei Avdayev launched the satellite into orbit by hand. Besides the addition of broadcasting recorded voice messages in three languages, Sputnik 41 was identical to the previous hand-tossed satellite, Sputnik 40. The satellite was deployed to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Aero Club de France and the 41st anniversary of Sputnik 1. Sputnik 41's radio functioned for one month, and after an additional month orbiting offline, the satellite fell back to Earth. Sputnik 99 Sputnik 99, the third hand-tossed satellite, is known above all for the controversy and public outrage it caused before being launched. The satellite was developed by a French and Russian amateur radio satellite group with the Russian Space Agency's Flight Control Center, or TSUP. Unfortunately, in a desperate attempt to obtain funding for the dying Russian space station, the Russian Space Agency's Flight Control Center made a secret deal with a Swiss watch manufacturer to broadcast advertisements from the satellite over amateur radio signals promoting the watchmaker and its products. In the agreement, Swatch, the watch manufacturer, agreed to monetarily support the space agency in exchange for spreading voice and text messages over amateur radio frequencies. However, the unprecedented action was a blatant violation of the International Code of Conduct. Radio organizations and amateur radio fans across the globe were outraged and publicly objected to the ill use of amateur radio frequencies for private commercial use. Inevitably, the Russian space agency was forced to deactivate the radio on Sputnik 99 before the launch, and by the time the small sphere was tossed into orbit, it was just a piece of useless metal. After the infamous Swatch controversy, Russia couldn't secure the necessary funds to save Mir. Alas, in early 2001, the 15-year-old space station was deliberately deorbited to be consumed in Earth's atmosphere. Since then, hand-tossed satellites have seen little use outside of Russian space programs, but the science is there and it proves that small devices are a feasible alternative to large, expensive satellite projects. Thank you for watching our video. Do you think hand-tossed satellites should be further developed? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story, hit that like button and consider subscribing to this and all our other Dark Documentaries channels, where you'll find more astounding history-inspired stories that'll blow your mind.